Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. I'm just going to lift a couple of verses. Verse 26 and 27. The Lord Jesus is the speaker. Luke 17, verse 26 and 27. And as it was in the day of Noah, or Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we can gather under this roof in such a wet and rainy night. We thank you, Father, that we're dry, we're warm, but we're here under the sound of your word, and we're here to worship your son. We are here gathered together to praise his name, the Lord Jesus Christ, to exalt him, and to worship you, Lord, for all you have done and accomplished for us at Calvary. We thank you, Lord, that we're saved, those of us who know you. We're saved. Thank you for the songs of Zion we have sung. We thank you, Lord, for the songs that Leanne has sung. Now we pray, Father, that you would settle us in our own minds and hearts. Lord, will you take any opposing spirit to thy word, any distracting thought away from us, and bind it in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, or this night be over, if there's one who has found themselves on a rainy evening in a tent in the countryside, the Lord, have found themselves come in here. The Lord, who are not saved, we pray, Lord, tonight you would arrest them and that you would save them. Glorify the name of the Lord Jesus tonight. <laughs> For his name's sake, we pray and ask it. Amen. The title of this evening is The Spirit of God versus the Spirit of the Age. The Spirit of God versus the Spirit of the Age. The Lord Jesus is speaking about his coming again and what we can expect the earth, our nation, to be like at the coming of Christ. He said it'll be like the days of Noah. And then we'd have to look at what it was like in the days of Noah. I've spoken this topic, I don't know how many times, but I've got a different slant on it this evening. The Lord has given me something different, a different perspective on it. And many people laugh at the idea of a great flood sent by God to destroy a sinful people and to show his grace and mercy on a man called Noah and all who would hear Listen and obey. People laugh at it. They think it's hilarious that this would actually happen and that we would actually believe it as Christians. Those who would believe the word and the warning from God would enter into the ark and they would be saved. But sadly, we're told it was only Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives that entered in. And what we're told here in verse 27 of Luke 17 says that they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. The word flood, we get our word cataclysmic from. A cataclysmic event came and destroyed them all. The word of warning was given by Noah. And the people did not want to listen. On the other hand, there are some Christian apologists and archaeologists who have made it their life's ambition to seek and to search out the proofs and the truths of all of this. So, And we're thankful for that. But brothers and sisters and friends tonight, while their work and their labor of love is very much appreciated and helpful, especially to the body of Christ, These things that are brought to light may be good, but for me personally, for me personally, 
the things that matter and is settled because of what the scripture says and not even because what archaeology says. In our reading in Luke 17, verses 26 and 27, and in Matthew 24, verses 37 and 38, both tell of the Lord Jesus talking about the days of Noah. Now, if the Lord Jesus said it happened, I believe him. I believe it to be true with all of my heart. And hence in Luke 17, 26 and 27, the Lord makes, a, if you want, a comparison and a similarity between Noah and the flood and his coming again. And his coming again. And hence when the Son of Man, speaking of himself, is coming, the earth, our land, the nation, society will be like it was in the day when Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed all those who were outside the ark. In other words, they rejected Noah and his word. They rejected Noah and his gospel. And they rejected Noah and the warning. And today there are people in our society who reject the gospel, reject the Christian and the word, the preacher and the word. They reject Christ. And hence, at the coming again, the earth will be like what it was like in the days of Noah. And hence, we have at the end of the age, take note of this, and at the end of the spirit of the age. Notice, at the end of the age, or the end of people call it the world, but the end of the age that we're in today, 2023, when Christ returns, it will be the end of this age. And when he returns, it'll be the end of this age but it will also be the end of the spirit of this age. The spirit that is driving men and driving women to a lost eternity. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, if you'd like to turn, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 says these words. And you, the Ephesians, the believers, the Christian, and you hath he quickened, that is the Holy Spirit, and you hath he quickened who were dead. The word dead is nechros. And it means as dead as dead as dead could be. Dead. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins. In other words, we were going with the flow of the spirit of the age. I want to show you verse 2. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the devil, the spirit that now worketh in Paul's day is the spirit that now worketh in our day, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And hence the apostle is telling us tonight that there is a course of this world and the word course is where he on, this period, age of time, and the word world is cosmos. The cosmos can be the stars and the sun and the moon and the planetary systems that we hear about. But the cosmos has broken down into different sections. For example, we talk about the sporting world. The word used there would be the sporting cosmos. Or the, if you want, in the sport you have the boxing world or you have the the football world and you have whatever, the cosmos, the cosmos, and we all make up the cosmos. Hence Israel were known as the cosmos when the Lord was speaking to them. That was the Israelite world. Now take note of this, brothers and sisters. The, Lord, uh, Paul, the Lord's word says through Paul, you were quickened. And I've told you this before, but in case there's some haven't realized this, it's the word zopoio. And it means you have been made alive. You have been regenerated by the Spirit of God. You have been made alive or you have been reanimated. Reanimated. Adam walked with the Lord in the cool of the day. He was animated with God. Animated unto the Lord. And they talked one with another. The Lord spoke with Adam. Adam spoke with the Lord. They conversed. They communed one with the other. He was animated. He was alive under God. 
And then when sin came, death came, and we all were separated from God, we all walked in our sins and our trespasses, and hence the Holy Spirit had to come and reanimate us to make us alive unto God again, to take us from our death, to take us from that realm of trespasses and sins wherein we were dead and in darkness. But he came and he made us alive. He reanimated us. And if you're saved tonight, you should have a walking, talking, living, breathing relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Alive unto God. Alive unto him. You should have a consciousness of the word. Conscious of his presence. Conscious of sin. Conscious of him. If you're saved. And Paul is telling us we're in time past, verse 2, ye walked according. The word according, kata, means, gives the idea of a pressing down of dominance. There was a dominant feature in our life to the course of this world. Now, see the course of this world? There's a German word used for it. It's called the Zeitgeist. Or the Zeitgeist. And it gives the idea of the spirit of the age. The spirit of of the age. And here we see the spirit of God versus the spirit of the age. We all were under the dominance of the spirit of the age, dead as dead could be, away from God, separated on the broad road to destruction, going toward the lake of fire should we leave this scene of time. And yet we were dead to God. Every one of us, dead in our trespasses, dead in our sins. The spirit of the age, we flowed with it. The things that happened in the world, sure you thought nothing off the Lord. The things that you get up to, sure it wouldn't have worried you what you get up to. The things that you done, sure you wouldn't have thought anything of it. The things that you done, until because you were dead to God, until the spirit of God came and reanimated you to behold the Lamb, to behold the Lord Jesus Christ. And there you see yourself as a sinner and he as the saviour. And there you cry for mercy. Are you saved tonight? Are you saved tonight? And notice here the course of this world is the spirit of the age according or with the dominance of the prince of the power of the air. The spirit, there it is, the spirit of the age. The, it is the the spirit against everything that is of God. This spirit is an antichrist spirit. The spirit of the age is an antichrist spirit, is a demonic spirit because it's the, the spirit of the prince of the power of the air and it works now in the children of disobedience. And the word disobedience means those who cannot be persuaded, those who will not be persuaded, those who refuse to be persuaded that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun and there's only one saviour that can save you from your sin. Trust there's none in here like that this evening. Impersuadable. Notice we were dead. We were destitute of a life that recognizes and is devoted to God. We walked according to the course of this life. The zeitgeist, the, the spirit of the age had the dominance on us. We submitted ourselves to it and the spirit of this age led us was leading us to death and darkness and to our doom. Thank God for his Holy Spirit who came into our lives and reanimated us, made us, regenerated us, made us alive unto God that we might see our need of him. The apostle says, we who are saved we who are Christ's, we who are born of God, once walked in death and darkness, that we also walked according to all the devil had. But he, the Lord himself, the Spirit of God, quickened us. Brothers and sisters, now if you're saved, you're not under the dominance 
of the spirit of the age. But we walk according, the word walk, by the way, walking according to the course of this world, it's the word parapatheo. You know what it means? You ordered your life because you liked it like that. We went to the bars and the pubs and the clubs and we done all the things we done, all the sins we done because our flesh loved it like that. We were under the dominance of the spirit of the age because we liked it like that. But God sent forth his Holy Spirit into our hearts. And now we're crying, Abba, Father. We're saved by grace alone. Through the blood of Christ. Notice here, if you will, the word here for spirit, by the way, uh, is the word pneuma. And it's used for God as the Holy Spirit as well. Pneuma is where we would get for example, pneumatic from, you know the pneumatic drills, boom, 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 powered by air. That's where we get the word pneumatic, or pneumaticos is the word. It's powered by air. So every day of our lives as Christians, we may, we may not all be up to it every day. We may all feel our weaknesses and understand our faults every day. But when he lives within you, when the Holy Spirit is within you, when you're no longer under the dominance of the spirit of the age out there, but you're now walking and ordering your life according to the, not the course of the world, but according to the power of the Holy Spirit and not the word, world, but the word of God, it's like the bum, bum, bum. The power is the driver. The driver is the power who is the Holy Ghost himself. And maybe you're awake today. Maybe you're saying, I want to give up today. I can tell you, friends, you may say, I want to walk away today. I just can't do it anymore. Get into the place with God because I'll tell you, he'll give you the pneumatic gas, the wind of the Spirit to go on with him. We who are saved, we who are Christ, we who are born of God, we are alive We're not dead. We are in light. We're not in darkness. We are in this world, but we are not off this world. We are saved by grace and we are not lost and still in our sin. We are spirit filled and spirit led, not dominated by the zeitgeist or the spirit of this age. And the Christian who is alive unto God and the Christian whose life is ordered by God and the Christian whose will is swallowed up by the will of God, and the Christian who knows their life is not their own, but they are bought with a price, even with the precious blood of Christ. They are awake and not woke in this world. Are you awake or are you woke? It's a big difference. Are you awake or are you woke? If you're woke, you're going according to the course of this world. The spirit of this age. But if you're awake, you're walking according to the course of that word. Where are you, brother, sister, and friend? Are you awake or are you woke? I would like to think by now CET is a church that is awake to the things of God. Amen. Awake. We are awake and not woke. We are alive to see this present world. We are alive and understand what age we are living in and what is really happening in our nation and in the world today. This spirit of this age, like the other ages, like Noah's day, the spirit of the age is the spirit of Antichrist. And I hope and pray you are awake to this. This Antichrist spirit will take the place of Christ. This Antichrist spirit will demean Christ. This Antichrist spirit will hate Christ. This Antichrist spirit will even pretend to be Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, listen to what the apostle says. If our gospel be headed as head to them who are lost or that are lost. 
Verse 4, he says, in whom the God, a small g, speaking of the wicked one, the devil, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Notice, see the word image there. The light of of Christ, who is the image of God. The word image is the word character. Character. And it's where we get the word his character comes out. And it's also linked to ikone, where he is the icon of God. Where when you when you hear the gospel, you see the ikone of God. The, it's the, the, the Lord Himself, God Himself, is seen in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the world doesn't want you to see that. And the spirit of this age, this Antichrist spirit, does not want you to know that wants to blind you to that. They want to take away that which we see and make us blind to what that which is happening all around in our schools, in our colleges, in our universities, in our streets and society. It wants to rob Christ of his glory in your life. It wants to try and break down the family unit. He wants to take your children at a young age and pervert their minds. He wants to take them in their schools and colleges, in their primary schools. And he wants to pervert them. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago and someone watching online was, they they couldn't believe this was happening. Brothers and sisters, this is coming into our schools. And the WHO have said they want it in from abortion They want it in from abortion right the whole way through to primary school that children, and I have to be careful because there's young children here, will be taught that there's pleasure in playing with self and how to do it up to the age of nine. The World Health Organization, it's on their website. Talking about all sorts of strange sexual behaviors to teach your wee ones. See, they've passed, they've got the key in abortion. Doors are opened. And then it goes, and it grows, and it goes, and it grows. And it's called the spirit of the age. And it comes to the place where it's not about equality anymore, but about dominance. About dominance. I'm told just yesterday, in that abominable parade in Belfast, I'm told just yesterday there was one walking down with a t-shirt and I can't say the language because it's too crude but the F word was used in it saying the F word, the Lord. In the middle of Belfast, in the middle of the town but here's the thing brothers and sisters that's the spirit of the age. The spirit of the age is kill the baby in the womb. The spirit of the age says it's all right to save a bird's nest. It's all right to save a bird's eggs, but slaughter the child in the womb. The spirit of the age says that you can take the child and that child will grow up to have a little mind that's full of sexuality from primary school. Brothers and sisters, it needs to be stopped. Somebody has to stop them. Somebody has to do it. I've already a few pastors willing to come on board with me to make sure it happens. And we will do everything in our power to make sure that this spirit of this age, this antichrist spirit, this perversion is stopped in Jesus' name. The spirit of this age versus the spirit of God. And like it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the coming of the Son of Man, he says. When I come, it will be like the days of Noah. Well, I think we're getting there. Brothers and sisters, the gospel is headed to blinded minds. It's the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them. A hidden gospel 
the blinded minds. On the hidden Christ. To darkened, dead, and destitute hearts. And you know, just like you and I, they need to be saved. They need to be saved. In Luke 17, if you'll look again up at it with me, verses 26 and 27. As it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They, were, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came. Cataclysmic flood it means. It means something cataclysmic happened in the earth. This flood. And destroyed them all. In Genesis 6 and verse 1, if we look at it, as Jesus says, the days of the coming of him, his, his coming, pardon me, in Genesis 6 and verse 1, it talks about some of this happening. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives all of which they choose. That would need time in itself to look into that. And the Lord said, notice here's the spirit of God with the spirit of the age. My spirit shall not always strive with man For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. In other words, when this flood comes, the canopy of protection from the sun over the earth will come down in the deluge. The fountains of the deep will come up from the earth. And that protective canopy was because of sin. Hence we have the rainbow. Seven colors, not six. Six is the number of man. Seven is the number of God's completion and perfection. Notice this, if you will. Man's days will be, because he's flesh, because now he's a fallen, degenerate, depraved human being, unable to save himself. And the Lord says he was going to reduce the years of their living to 120 or thereabouts. And hence man started to die even younger than they did before, after the flood. Now Bill Gates is now trying and planning to put thousands of aeroplanes in the sky. So much for climate change that he supports, but he says it's for climate change, going to put the aeroplanes in the sky and fill the skies with particles that will float in the air to block out the sun's rays. Now listen, this is a known fact. This is what he's looking to do. This is his next next big venture. To block out the sun's rays, hence there'll be no temperature rising and so forth as they tell us about. Brothers and sisters, the Lord took the canopy off the earth in judgment Bill Gates is not going to be allowed to put one up again. It's man trying to get rid of sin and the judgment of God. Man trying to become God. Notice this. In Genesis 1 verses 1 and 2, we see syncretism happening. Syncretism. Syncretism is the merging of different religions Cultures, schools of thought. Does it sound familiar? Syncretism is when diversity becomes an absurdity. And you're left with a mess that our nation is in tonight. For example, in Judges 17 and 6 it says... In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. That's where we are. 
Man is God of himself, does everything he wants, everything passes, everything is okay, does that which is right in his own eyes. In other words, no law of God, but man is God of his own law. I'll say it again. No law of God, but man is God of his own law. They worship, as Paul says in Romans 1 and 25, they worship the creature more than the creator. In other words, there's no moral absolutes. No moral absolute. So let me tell you, where is the moral absolute when you take the word of God out of the nation? Out of our laws of our nation, where's the moral absolute? Because look where we're heading to. Look what's happening. Look at the depravity that's happening and everything gets worse and worse. As I said, the key opened up from abortion on demand to abortion up the birth. Now within a matter of an hour or two, whether in the womb or out of the womb, well, it's all right to kill them here, but not here. And when we get here and they are later then born, you know what happens? We can't do that, so we will pervert their minds to be like our minds. And I've told you, and it's on the WHO webpage. You ready? They have listed it out. All the things they want. It's happening in Netherlands at the minute. But it's going to be happening, they said, in every country of the world. They are going to put in that they have to be taught that pedophiles are just minor attracted people. You know what that means? A child who's being abused. A child who's being abused by... Uh, uncle so-and-so or whoever else it may be. A child who's being abused and they're told this is a secret between me and you. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with this. It's all okay. You don't need to talk about this. But it's between me and you. And the child who's being abused thinks it's all natural and it continues to happen to them. This is the days of Noah. This is the spirit of the age. And now we need the spirit of God to move in our land. We need the Spirit of God to move among his people. We need the Spirit of God to move in the hearts of the Christian. Listen, and I was talking to Andrew on Friday about this. I said, see whenever COVID came, the whole pandemic, the whole scandemic of it all. See when all of that happened. And I told him on Friday, I said, Andrew, you know what it's like? It's from then, the difference then right to now it's like there was a gateway open to another spirit. And that other spirit has come out like a flood across our land, come out like a flood across our nation. And he says, I was just about to say that. Can you say, brothers and sisters, is it only me? Am I mad? Am I a tinfoil hat on me here? Is it only me or do we see it? Another spirit has been released on our land, in our nation, and in our world. And it's the spirit of this age, the prince of the power of the air, the devil, Satan himself, and he is going mad. You know why? Because he knows he has but a short time. He has but a short time. You know what that means? The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. I wish he had come right now. I wish he had come just to see us all changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Pastor Jeff, you'll be ready to play your football again. Be fit as a fiddle. Pastor Michael, your hair would be darker than the way it was when I first met you. So would mine. (laughs) So would mine. The king is coming. Such a life, a world that we are living. But Christ is coming. Brothers and sisters, this syncretism is in our land. Everyone know about moral absolutes. 
And it's happened throughout time at the spirit of the age from Nebuchadnezzar when he calls them to worship the idol at the sound of the music and everyone bows down before it except for the Hebrew children. It's coming again with the spirit of the age. Like Daniel 5 and Belshazzar's feast when the handwriting comes on the wall, 120 provinces and princes to represent them comes. The, there's a, a new world order gathering as it were. There's a one world government under him. And here it's, it's, it's a localized one, but it's, it grows around the world through this Babylonian spirit. And here the handwriting comes on the wall. Mene, mene, tikel, you farsin. He says, you... Have been wed, you have been wed in the balances and thou art found wanting. The Spirit of God was still alive, you know. He was alive in Noah's day. My spirit shall not always strive with man. He was alive in eternity because he's God, the living God. He was alive in Noah's day. He's alive in Nebuchadnezzar's day. He's alive in Belshazzar's day. He's alive here in Jesus' day. And he was poured out in Acts chapter 2 into the church. Brothers and sisters, it's time we believe that Jesus is alive, that the Spirit of God is living in us. It's time we took our place. It's time we took our stand. Notice here the time it is. Let's rush on, shall we? In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 2, there's a change of DNA. The change of Seth's DNA. Seth means appointed, substituted. Remember Cain kills Abel? Cain is sent off. And the Lord gives him Seth. And Seth's name means appointed. Here's a mixture of bloodlines, cultural so-called enrichment, religious ecumenism. And Seth means compensation. And this line, the Lord said, must be, this is where, this is where the compensation is, Eve. This is where the bloodline must be. This, through this one, Seth, Eve. Adam, through this one, He's the appointed one. Through his line would come Noah. Through his line would come Shem, the son of Noah. That's where you get the word Shematic or Sematic from. Through his line would come Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, Israel. Through his line would come Judah. Through his line would come David. Through his line will come the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, don't mix your DNA with them. Keep it pure and keep it separated. They started mixing. They started mixing with the spirit of the age, with all the man around about. There's fallen angels involved. The Seth line to be kept. And the Lord gave them a warning. You ready? The Lord gave them a warning. And he says, listen, when Methuselah dies, Methuselah lived for 969 years. And at the end of those years, as it were, in Noah's time, he started building the ark. And they all laughed at Noah until it started to rain. Nine hundred and sixty-nine years, and Methuselah, his name means, when he dies, it shall be sent. Methuselah died, and it started to rain, and the flood came, as Jesus said, and destroyed them all outside of the ark. Here's a wonderful thing in Genesis 6, if you'll look with me, please. Genesis 6. Let's just go to verse 5 for time's sake. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Am I speaking about 
our day? Are we looking at our age, the spirit of this age? And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I see this word found. Noah wasn't going as if, I need to find grace. I need to find, that's not what it means. The word here for grace is a Hebrew word, matzah. Matzah. And it means to acquire, to receive. It gives the idea to come upon, or to light upon, or to come in possession of, or to encounter, to appear, or to come forth. To come forth. And maybe the, English teachers in here could maybe give me, keep me straight on this, but this is what's known as a transitive verb. Uh, and it's not intransitive, but transitive. So it comes from one, has to go to a, a destination or a place. It's not describing of what has happened and what has been done. It's going from one to the other. If I come from here to Pastor Michael and hand him something and you write, and Pastor Ken took his Bible and walked over and gave it to Pastor Michael. He received it. It's transitive verb. The idea is here that Noah, in the transitive way, received grace. That grace came to Noah. Grace appeared unto Noah. Grace traveled to Noah, the object of the grace of God. And every one of you who are saved tonight are the object of grace. The object of grace found in Christ. The word grace or kin is the word that means well favored. It comes from a word, a root word, chanan, and it means one bowing down or stooping down in kindness to an inferior. That God in his grace came down to where Noah was, knowing the flood, the judgment, the cup was filled, and now he's coming down in grace. Right to Noah. He says, Noah, I'll find you righteous. Build an ark. Here's how you'll be saved. And when you and I got saved, the Spirit of God came with the preaching of the word. The Spirit of God said as it were to Ken, Ken, you're on the Broad road to destruction. You're going to end up in hell, son. But here's the cross. Here's your salvation. So, I must close this. Thank you for your attention. When... When the Lord says, my spirit shall not always strive with man, when does he stop striving? Well, with the Christian, he strives with us every day because he lives in us and we're still in a body of flesh. But when does he stop striving? Well, one, he stops striving with the will of man when it no longer resists the will of God. In John 6 and 44, the Lord Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Secondly, the will, or pardon me, the striving stops when the unregenerate heart of man, of of his depraved fallen human nature, is given over to their own lusts. And God says, you want to do that? Off you go. You want to live like that? Off you go. And they die like that. And they stand before God like that. For example, Romans 1 verse 24 says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And I wonder when churches are supporting this, do they ever read the scriptures? The Spirit of God stops striving with you when you're dead. When you're dead. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day. 
may bring forth. So I close with this. Noah and the ark, and even Peter mentions it. 1 Peter 3 and 20 says, Which sometime were disobedient, the people of Noah's day, and the angels that left their first habitation, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering, notice this, the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing were in few that as eight souls were saved. God's long suffering. But we don't know when that long suffering will end for the Christ rejecter. The spirit of the age is working on the hearts of men and women. And Paul says in Romans 2 and 4, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness or forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. See the word here, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearing. See the word despisest there. It's a big long word called cataphroneo. Gives the idea to look down. To look down. And the idea of this cataphroneo is this. Paul is saying, are you, gives a picture of looking down your nose. Are you looking down your nose at the goodness and the forbearance of God? It means that God is withholding because of his great love. He's withholding his wrath till every cup be filled with their measure until it's time to pour forth. And Paul is saying, are you, looking down your nose at the goodness of God and the forbearance of God, the long-suffering of God. Are you looking down your nose at it? Because there's many who look down their nose and don't want to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters and friends, I hope there's none here tonight or watching live or later who are looking down their nose at the goodness of God. And if you want to know what they're looking down their nose at, Well, if they're looking down at the nose of the goodness of God, they're looking down their nose at Christ and Calvary. The cross. And the Spirit of God is still working. The Spirit of God is the eternal Spirit. He's always been and always will be. But He's still alive. He's still alive. He's still convicting hearts. He's still speaking to lives. And in the spirit of the age, when we see the nonsense and the stuff that's going on, this, the vileness and the evil and the depravity of it all, when we see it all, that's the spirit of the age. That spirit of the age will die when Christ returns because he's going to put the devil in the lake of fire. I hope you're not going with him to the lake of fire. I know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be round his throne. I'm going to be serving the king. I'm going to worship him throughout all eternity. Can't wait.